You're listening to our PAC Politics Podcast. Our podcast is brought to you by our organization, our United Resource PAC. We are a tax-exempt political organization. I'm your host, Brittany McDowell. And again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Trump is coming back. Trump will be making a run for political office. Also, we've got for you today a resource that will help you conduct research on any politician in any political office. Let's go ahead and let's get this Monday's show started. Hey, this is Brittany. Just wanted to shoot you a quick reminder. Look in the description box of this episode and you can find a link to our website. On our website, you can find our latest blog posts. You can find our contact information. If you even want to make a contribution, you can go over there and do that as well. You can find out the policies we are looking at and targeting as an organization. You know, I say all the time that we are a tax exempt political organization. If you want to know more about that, Again, go on over to our website, our-pack.com, where you can find out everything you want to know. You can do everything you want to do. We will gladly, gladly, gladly welcome you on our website with open arms. Again, check out our website in the description box below. What form will the Donalds take next time? Let me start this segment by saying that as an organization, we're focused on COVID economic stimulus and relief. But today's show, um, I want to take today's show and kind of focus on something that doesn't exactly have to do with our targeted subject matter. But it's pretty important because Trump was the first president in modern history to boycott his successor's inauguration. So, again, today's show is not, if you're coming to today's show looking for me to talk about, you know, um, either an executive order. Well, I did talk about that Friday, so if you missed that, go ahead and check it out. Um, The executive order that uh, seeks to speed up our next stimulus payments. Uh, Or if you want information about stimulus, today is not that type of show. I'm sorry, check back on Wednesday. But so anywho, when when ex-President Trump, when he was leaving for Mar-a-Lago, he said, and I'm quoting here, goodbye, we love you, we will be back in some form. Am I the only person who thought that was kind of ominous? Am I the only person who was like some form, like just kind of maybe you envision like the Loch Ness monster or something. And you're like, what the heck is this dude talking about? Right? Like, what did he mean when he said he would be back in some form? Now, before we can even kind of tackle that question, one of the first things that I think is kind of the most important thing to acknowledge here is Trump's legacy, right? Um, I I think it's without question. I think it's without saying that the legacy that Trump left behind uh, or, or that he created for himself rather was one of an incitement of uh, an insurrection at our nation's capital, you know? And so when you consider that fact, you have to ask the question, like what legitimate options does this, does this man, does the Donald even have when it comes to trying to make this, this comeback, you know, is, is it even possible for him to make this type of a comeback? And, and why, frankly, will anyone even care if he tries to come back? Um, to that, I would say to you, as my mom would say, don't fool yourself. <laughs> there are absolutely people who will care about him trying to make a comeback. And not only people who would care, but people who would willingly support a comeback. Um, and so I, I really want, as as many people are in the camp, myself included, uh, the, the camp of, you know, being happy that we're like moving 
back into a situation where we have like an actual president who's looking to govern, who's right. Like it, it, even if you're in that boat, even if you are a supporter of now president Biden and vice president Harris, um, do not fool yourself into thinking that while there were more supporters of the Biden-Harris administration or the Biden-Harris ticket, that it completely um, wipes away the people who cared about or supported the Donald. There are plenty of people who, you know, the inauguration of, of Biden, of President Biden, did not like make these people dis disappear. Like we are still facing a clear and present danger with not just people who care, but supporters of Donald Trump. And so I don't know if you caught this, Trump, he went to the Texas border and he released this video. And on this video, he pledged to his supporters, mind you, that, and, and I'm quoting here, it says, the, the movement we started is only just beginning. Again, what did he mean by this? You know, here we are in today's episode and I'm presenting you with more questions than we have answers. That's kind of where a lot of people are with Trump at this point. Okay, we know he's gone, but what's the next move? Now, some people, they've speculated that Trump is going to like form this new political party. And I've kind of heard two names thrown around. Um, I've heard the Patriot Party, which historically is not a new party. We have had a party called the Patriot Party. Look that one up. Um, and then there's been kind of mention of something called MAGA Party. Now, to, to the people who kind of throw that around. Now, now let me say this though. I am not, I, I can't say unequivocally that people are saying this because they have some inside information that you or I don't have. Maybe they have talked to Donald and he told them, yo, I've got these plans and this is what I'm doing. But I'm just operating when I say this under the assumption that they have the same information that you and I have and that they don't have like this inside tip with the Donald, right? So that said, when you kind of consider this hypothesis of, of, a, uh, of a potential new party uh, erected by Donald Trump, I think it's important to note that we're not talking about uh, an ex-political figure who was kind of seeped into the 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 uh, the fabrics of a distant memory for a lot of Americans. For a lot of Americans, both his supporters and non-supporters, he is still an ever-present figure, which is kind of mind-boggling when you consider that, like, he's been banished from our modern forms uh, or platforms of communication, right? Like, how is this man even still in our minds? But specifically for his supporters, like, he is still on the front of their minds. So you're not hypothesizing about some like disgruntled Republican who no one really gave a damn about, who they didn't pay attention to, who said, screw this, I don't have any pool in this party, so I'm going to go do my own thing. That's not what we're dealing with here. What we're dealing with, hypothetically, is, is, is someone potentially creating this new political party who still retains an iron grip, this iron fist on his Republican base. It's like this man, he has loyal voters, vo voters that are, let me ask you this, for those of you who either voted for Joe Biden or considered it, would you have gone and stormed the Capitol on his behalf? Let that seep in to show you how loyal. Like, I I really, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm wrong here, but I cannot it does not come to my mind if I try to recollect any Biden-Harris supporter who was so enthralled with furthering the political ideology of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that they were willing to go and put their freedom in the line by on the line by potentially going to to jail. But now you could make the argument that, especially when you kind of look at 
how things have unfolded that these people really didn't even think they'd go to jail because they'd had like this sense of entitlement that not only they assumed, but that had been playing out for them for years for a lot of people. But that's another subject for another day. But so he has like these, these, these loyal voters and other Republicans know that, right? This is why, despite the fact that he's a former president, despite the fact that he, he, he attempted, he called for, he successfully, uh, played a part in, 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 uh, in starting this insurrection that we saw at the Capitol, um, this is why, even with that considered, you still have Republicans on many levels, federal levels, state levels, local levels, who in normal times would politically be trying to like distance themselves from that type of character to save their own political hide. But that's not the case now. Because the base, the overall base for the Republican Party supports the person who did this. And and so on the flip side of that, though, you have some people who say, look, this man, he's, he, he appears to be more powerless than ever. Like his Twitter, which was like his megaphone was taken away. He can't talk to anybody. He just has to sit and pout because online he's been put in social media jail. And then if you couple that with the fact that if when they get the Senate trial started, he'll be forbidden from seeking any a second term, he won't be able to get in public office again. Like the dude, like, dude, he's powerless. Do you see how both sides are kind of thinking two completely different things? That said, let me tell you this. Nobody, as far as I'm concerned, nobody who was not on the inside, an insider, With Donald Trump, nobody can tell you definitively what his next move is going to be, okay? So it may be, especially, I don't know if you remember earlier on, remember the thing was he's going to start this media company. He's setting it up for a media company. And then now it's, you know, he's going to come back and go for another. Everyone is kind of hypothesizing, myself included, but nobody knows definitively what Trump's next move will be. But one thing that we know for sure is this. He is going to turn completely on the Republican Party. That is who he is. And and that's what he does. He has a track record of turning on people and not even just turning, but like he turns on them, he devours them, and then he spits them out. That is who this man is, and that is what he does. So when you consider that, is he likely to start another party? Sounds likely to me. But then the logistics of that, eh, when you consider what he actually could do, is that actually the smartest play? If you're looking to completely devour somebody, an organization that you feel turned on you, that you feel didn't support you, is that really the smartest move? Probably not. Let me tell you, I'm going to make a hypothesis here. Again, it's just a hypothesis. I don't, I'm not in with Trump. I can't say with certainty what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. But when I consider all the stuff that I've kind of laid out in front of you, and, and including some things that I didn't even mention during today's podcast, if Brittany was in the mind of Donald Trump, what I would tell you to prepare for, what I would tell America to prepare for, is for one of his children to take a run at politics. So then what does this mean for Trump? Because we know Trump and his ego, he's not just going to sit on the sidelines and let an untested one of his offspring, politically untested, go into this ring, a ring where he sees how they did the Donald. That's exactly why he's not going to sit on the sidelines. 
Trump, what he is going to do in my mind, if I can kind of politically calculate based on what I know about this political figure, what he is going to do is he's going to have his children, at least one of his children, take a run at politics. And he's going to create the tools necessary for their success. He already has the minions in his pocket, that kind of loyal base that love him and they love his children. So that's a, that's a, that's like a super uh, significant part of the equation. But the other missing part of that equation is media. Now, because you see, what was he doing with media towards the end? The... He, he called himself the golden goose, the golden goose or golden egg. He was golden in some way for Fox. And he talked about how they had forgot their golden goose or forgot their golden egg. Again, the exact quote does not come to mind. I apologize. But he turned, as is his pattern, he turned on the very organization that carried him to the political success that he had. I frankly, even even with Twitter, he could not have made it as far as he did politically without Fox News. But he still turned on them without question, without hesitation. And he will do the same thing to this Republican base. They don't see it. And this is a man so full of ego. So with that ego, with the motivation to, to not just bite the heads off of these people, but chew it and spit it out and, and just utterly destroy it, he is going to be the necessary tool for the success of his children. At least one of them, politically. The Trump that will be making a run for political office when he talked about in some form will not be named Donald. Absolutely. Mark my words. Hey, so I want to tell you about our email list. Our email list is one of the best ways that you can stay in touch with us. If you look in the description box of this episode, you'll find a link to join our email list. By joining our email list, you'll get access to updates about policy and politicians that we support and oppose. When we have events, you'll get to know about those events via emails, and we'll just generally share news with you. We won't spam your inbox, I promise. Uh, And also, we inform you of our newest podcast episodes, which come out Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, by the way. Anyhow, joining the email list is not only easy, but it is absolutely free. Look in the description box of this episode. You'll find the link. Click it. Give us your name and your email. That's all we need. And you'll be in. So please join our email list and connect with us today. All right. Thanks. The resource that we are sharing with you today is a resource that comes from um, a nonprofit and nonpartisan organization. They actually provide an online political encyclopedia that covers American politics across several spectrums. You know, it's the, on the federal level, state level, local level, elections and public policy. Anything you want to know related to policy or politicians can be found utilizing this resource. And one of the things that is so distinctive about the organization behind the resources, the fact that they state that their goal is to inform people about politics by providing accurate and objective information. Two things that, especially considering the political climate us as Americans are trying to claw our way out of, these two things are oh so necessary and this organization definitely provides it they provide it so much so and and i believe in it so much so that our organization actually uses this resource for a majority of our political research and so considering today that we talked about a political figure and considering the 
politics that we saw pushed by and behind that political figure, uh, we wanted to provide you again today with a resource that is helpful in helping you do your research, not just on politicians themselves, but the policy that they claim to support or oppose. If you'd like to get access to the resource, in the description box below, you'll find the option to join our mailing list. All you need to give us after you click the link is your name and email address. We will not spam you. I promise you that. And as soon as you sign up, you'll receive both a welcome email as well as an email with a link to this resource. So again, you'll find it in the description box of this episode. Check it out. And in advance, thank you for linking up with us. Have a good one. All right, so that is our episode for today, January 25th, 2021. And I hope you, uh, again, despite the fact that what was discussed today was not... um, it, it wasn't something that is part of our targeted subject matter, being that we focus on COVID-19, economic stimulus and relief. I hope you can at least understand the importance of why the decision was made to even talk about this, right? Anywho, I hope you have a fantastic Monday. I hope today sets you up for a super fantabulous week. I hope you have a productive day. I hope you are safe. I hope you wear a face mask and I hope you carry your sanitizer. And most of all, if you have one, I hope you wear your hazmat suit because you definitely need it. This COVID is real. It is kicking butt and I do not want it to kick yours. So have a great day. And again, thank you for listening to another episode of our PAC Politics Podcast. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.